Hi, my name is Kristen. I'm a nurse at Saddleback in the emergency room and I am here today to teach you about CPP monitoring and setup. Alrighty. So, let's do a CPP line here. Okay. Alrighty. What are those markings on there, Kristen? Each of those marks denotes 10 centimeters, so you right. would have 10 for a single mark, and when you have two, it's 20. Alrighty. Okay. So the supplies you're going to need are a 500cc bag of normal saline, pressure tubing, okay, and a pressure bag. Alrighty. When you take the tubing out of the package, I would make sure that these, these connectors are tight so that you don't end up with any on the floor. Sometimes these connectors aren't tight enough, so if you tighten them while they're still in the package, you'll make sure that you don't drop any on the floor. To spike your bag, you want to get it going to want to get all the air out of it, so when you spike it initially, puncture a hole in the top just to puncture through, and then push the air out of it, and then put the spike back in it so that you don't have any excess air in there. Once that's done, you can put your bag inside your pressure bag. Do they put any heparin in these pressure and uh, the saline anymore? We don't heparinize them anymore. Okay. It's been found that the straight saline has been just as effective in keeping the line open. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what you want to do is prime your tubing. To prime the tubing, you need to turn the stopcock off to the patient. Mm -hmm. Squeeze the little white tabs. And get all the air out of it. And then you're going to turn the stopcock back off to the port, mm -hmm. opening it up to the patient, and prime all the way through the end. Mm -hmm. Just by squeezing, again, squeezing the white tabs. Some catheters have a little blue pulley that you pull on, but it's usually right under the transducer and you'll know what to do with it. Once you're primed all the way through, you can turn your clamp, or roll your clamp down so that you're not going to leak water all over saline, and pump your pressure bag up. And can you show me where the stop clock is right now when you're pumping? Sorry. Mm -hmm. It is off to the open port mm -hmm. so that it gets air from mm -hmm. the pumper up Pumping into, into, into the, the bag. bag. Mm -hmm. And I notice this little dial is starting to come out over here. Mm -hmm. You'll keep pumping until you hit, it's colored in green, but it's 300 millimeters of mercury. Mm -hmm. Takes a minute. Mm -hmm. Okay, there you have it. Mm -hmm. Once it's pumped up to where you need it to be, you turn the stopcock off towards the bag and that will keep the pressure in the bag. Mm -hmm. You open your roller clamp. And you're going to connect your CVP pressure tubing to the distal port of a central line. And that's a direct connection there. That's a direct mm -hmm. connection. Mm -hmm. We found that different types of, of hubs sometimes cause problems, sometimes they don't. 
So it, we found it better to direct connect it. Mm -hmm. To find the flebostatic axis is where you want your transducer to be. On the patient, it's the fourth intercostal space, mid-chest, Mm -hmm. So we're going to take that spot on this patient and level our leveler to that spot. We want the transducer to be at the level of the phlebostatic axis. So this is actually going to have to come up a little bit. And the transducer is attached to the entire pressure tubing line that we just uh, purged. Correct. Mm -hmm. The other option to do instead of um, Connecting this to a pole mount is you can you can tape it directly to the patient's body, as long as you're still at the flebostatic axis. Mm -hmm. And you're looking for the bubble in the in middle. In the middle, right there it is. Mm -hmm. Once that's done, mm -hmm. so we're still in the middle. Okay. So you place the transducer then in these holders. Mm -hmm. In the holder right. or on the patient's body. Uh huh. Okay. And you get your cable and you're going to connect your cable to the cable that's on the transducer itself. It's like a phone wire. Mm -hmm. So you just plug it in there and it'll clip together. Heard that click. Mm -hmm. And when you take it apart, you make sure you, you push down on that because it's just like a phone wire. And if you're not pushing, if you're just trying to pull, it won't pull apart. Mm -hmm. So just make sure you push it down. Mm -hmm. You're going to put your CVP module into the open space and plug your, mm -hmm. module, or your monitor wire into the module. Once you've done that, there's different ways to get to this module, but the easiest way to get to it is to push the press, and it will bring up whatever um, module that you're pressing. Mm -hmm. So when we came to this module, it already is, is deemed for arterial blood pressure, but we don't want to use that, so we're going to change the label, and we're going to make it CVP. Let's see if I can see that. It's kind of blurry. Yeah, I can't see it on the monitor. That's okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, let's do this one again. It's now the CVP. We're going to set it the anywhere between 18 and 30 to get an adequate waveform because we're expecting a CVP. If a normal CVP is 2 to 7, um, we're expecting it somewhere around that range, if we're too low, it's going to show, not give us a waveform, and if we're too high, it's going to dampen the waveform. So um, even picking it at 18 is fine uh, to give you an adequate waveform. So once you've done that and your, wave, your um, scale is set, AACN, the American Association of Critical Care Nurses, suggests that it be at 20. Our monitors don't allow that. Um, so we're 18. We'll see what the waveform looks like. If it's mm -hmm. too dampened, we'll go up. Okay. Um, but we'll we'll start out with that. All right. So once you've done that, and you need to zero the transducer, you're going to turn the stopcock up and towards the patient. So it's going up towards the patient. Uh -huh. yeah. mm -hmm. If you were to go the other way, it would be going mm -hmm. down toward. Mm -hmm. It would go towards the bag. So mm -hmm. we're going to go up towards the patient. We're going to remove this cap. So we're open to air. Open to air, and going to get ready to replace that cap with a non-vented cap. At the same time, we're doing this. Okay. It's open to air. We're going to come over here. 
Two ways you can do it. You can either zero the transducer at the, mo at the monitor, or you can press zero on the module itself, and it'll do the same thing. It'll beep. Either in the left-hand lower or left upper corner, it's going to tell you CVP zeroed at such and such time on whatever date. Once you see that, then you go back to your transducer. You replace your, non, your vented cap with a non-vented cap and turn it off to the cap. Mm -hmm. Therefore, your system is open mm -hmm. and you are monitoring CVP. Great. So this one's monitoring 9. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the waveform is appropriate? The waveform mm -hmm. is. Waveform's going to vary a little bit depending on every person. This one is what you expect to, it to somewhat look like, and your A waves to be in line with every QRS. And here's different examples of different disease processes that can change the look of your CVP. A lot of work here. <laughs> Very nice. Thank you. Mm -hmm. If you complete the bundle within the first six hours in the emergency room, the mortality rate is supposed to decrease. So part of the six-hour bundle that they've, re they've recommended is, um, for one, measuring serum lactates, two, obtaining blood cultures prior to antibiotic administration, mm -hmm. administering broad-spectrum antibiotics within three hours, treating hypotension and lactate, elevated lactates with fluid. Mm -hmm. And if they have persistent hypotension, we are doing CVP monitoring and um, pressors if the, if the fluid has not resuscitated them. In the ER, we're including some CVP monitoring for our patients for se in sepsis. We have um, Try to, once a patient is identified as potentially septic, we, and it meets the SERS criteria, which are... Okay. A core temp of greater than 38 or less than 36 degrees Celsius, tachycardia, tachypnic, or a white blood cell count greater than 12,000 or less than 4,000, um, with one organ function, mm -hmm. um, organ dysfunction, mm -hmm. we are trying to initiate our CVP monitoring. So if a patient comes in that is hypotensive and they've gotten a 20 cc per kilo um, fluid resuscitation and they're not responding to that, then we initiate CVP monitoring. Um, our goal is to get the CVP to low being 10, higher being 14. Um, but most of the time, if they're septic, they're going to come in with a CVP that's probably 1 to 2 range. So we will give them the first fluid bolus. If they are not responsive to that and they continue hypotensive, or they have lactate that's greater than 4, we'll initiate CVP monitoring to determine what our fluid vo um, volume is. We like to push it up to 10 to 14. Um, if we get to a CVP that is 12 and the patient remains hypotensive, um, that indicates that instead of giving more fluid, we need to start giving vasopressors. Um, so I think important is that nurses in the ER not only know why they're doing this, but are able to do it. And I think we've, we've found that the more training that they get, the, the better off we're doing. Mm -hmm. And it's very important for all nurses, especially in ED and ICU, but also on med surge or tele, that they understand sepsis and what the signs are and how to call the physician right away. It's exactly. very, very important. There are protocols for sepsis on all, um, well, it would be in the hospital, but possibly different in, in the units because you would be the initial contact and you would find, you would be investigating whether it was a volume problem or a vasopressor problem. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. All right. Well, thank you, Christine. Thanks. This was great. Thanks. Thanks. To go over the CVP monitoring information. The um, picture here shows you 
this is more the old style, old nursing school <laughs> way mm -hmm. we used to do things. But this is just to kind of show you where the phlebostatic axis is on a patient that's laying down, mm -hmm. if you were to look at them. Mm -hmm. And it's right there with the transducer. That would be the transducer on the IV pole across Correct. from the phlebostatic axis. Mm -hmm. Correct. This is um, kind of what depicts a normal waveform. Mm -hmm. um, normal CVP is going to be anywhere from 2 to 7. Mm -hmm. And what's desired for sepsis is a, a, on the upward trend of 10 to 14. Mm -hmm. um, this is just kind of to show um, CVP monitoring in a nutshell for nurses. Um, we did this and laminated it so that they could wear it on the back of their badge mm -hmm. and so they would feel more comfortable in the, having the steps right on their body in order mm -hmm. to be able to do it in a quick manner. Okay. Um, the insertion procedure is just gathering all the supplies, as your hospital policy will tell you, mm -hmm. um, washing your hands, cleaning the site, and um, getting a chest x-ray for placement verification. Mm -hmm. Make sure that happens. Okay. Um, the setup is, it kind of goes toward, it, your hospital policy will tell you that, mm -hmm. um, but what we did want to point out is if your transducer is positioned above um, the phlebostatic axis, you will have a false low pressure. Mm -hmm. So important, not so much as that one, as in if it is below the phlebostatic axis, you're going to have a false high pressure. So mm -hmm. if your um, transducer falls off of the, the pole mm -hmm. or it's taped to the patient and it ends up under the patient, you want to make sure that is in the right spot before you start treating that number. Mm -hmm. That is critical. Fourth intercostal space, mid-chest, and that is the line for the axis right there. Correct. Okay, and the statistics here? It strikes an estimated 75,000 people in the U.S. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to, t it's um, expected actually to rise by 1.5 um, in the next couple years as the population starts to age. Mm -hmm. um, it is more, more dom or predominant in um, people that are less than one, greater than 65, mm -hmm. um, people who have comorbidities, malnutrition, yes. immunosuppression, and so we're going to see a lot more of it. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the importance of this whole campaign. And in the ER, we want to, the bundle elements to be completed within the first six hours of presentation, um, measuring serum lactates, getting blood cultures, administering bod spectrum antibiotics within three hours, um, that's of ED arrival. Um, in the event of hypotension or serum lactates greater than four, we're going to treat the hypotension um, with fluid first and vasopressors once we get our CVP high. Mm -hmm. Very good.